Here we're gonna look at two pretty interesting infinite sum identities. So I won't give away the closed form for these sums, but we will be exploring the sum as k goes from zero to infinity of n choose 4k. And then we'll also be exploring the sum as k goes from zero to infinity of one over three k factorial. And that three is connected to the k. So you're taking the quantity three k factorial. And we're gonna use the following combinatorial tool so if you have eta is equal to e to the two pi i over m, in other words, it's a primitive mth root of unity, and a of x equals the sum as k goes from zero to infinity of a sub k x to the k, in other words, it's the generating function for the sequence a k, then the sum as k goes from zero to infinity of a m k x to the m k, is equal to one over m times the sum as j goes from zero to m minus one of a evaluated at eta to the j times x. So notice this gives us a generating function for every mth terms term of the sequence. So notice we start with a sub zero, the next one is a sub m, then one after that is a sub two m and so on and so forth. And so that mimics what's going on here. So notice here, the first one is n choose zero, then n choose four, then n choose eight. Here we have the first one is one over zero factorial, then one over three factorial, then one over six factorial, and so on and so forth. So this tool is gonna to be extremely helpful for finding the closed form for these sums. Okay, so let's get to proving this tool. So the first thing that I wanna notice is that a to j, for j equals zero to m minus one are the roots of the polynomial z to the m minus one. And that's actually not too hard to see. We can see that directly by plugging in a to j into z to the m, m minus one. So notice we'll get a to the j to the m minus one but that's equal to e to the two pi i over m times j times m. But now that m in the numerator and denominator will cancel and then we subtract one. But notice here we have e to the two pi times j times i, but that's just one because any multiple of uh, two pi i in the exponent of e like that will give you one. So we have one minus one, which is equal to zero. And furthermore, these are all different numbers because these are all going around the unit circle in the complex plane. So we have found m roots to this polynomial. And since this polynomial is of degree m, we have all of the roots of this polynomial. Great. And now the next thing that we wanna notice is that if you take z to the m minus one, we can factor a z minus one out of it. And when we factor a z minus one out of it, we get z to the m minus one plus z to the m minus two, all the way down plus z plus one. Great. And now notice, eta to the zero is equal to one, will give you this root right here. So in other words, this is the root when you set j equal to zero. And the m minus one roots here are given by eta to the one, eta squared, all the way up to eta to the m minus one. Great. So now what we're gonna do is start on the right-hand side of this equation, and then we will build the left-hand side of this equation. So we have one over m, and then the sum as j goes from zero to m minus one of a evaluated at eta j times x. But now using the definition that we have for a, that's gonna give us one over m, and then the sum j equals zero to m minus one, and then the sum k equals zero to infinity of a sub k times eta to the j times k times x to the k. And now since this outer sum is a finite sum, I can easily change the order of summation. So I've got one over m, and then I have the sum k equals zero to infinity. I'm gonna take this a sub k term out, and now I have the sum j equals zero to m minus one of eta to the jk times x to the k. 
Okay, fantastic. So now we're gonna split this outer sum up into two pieces. The first piece will be all of the values of k that are divisible by m. In other words, they are multiples of m. And then the second piece will be everything else. So this is gonna be equal to one over m. And then we have the sum k equals zero to infinity. And like I said, these are gonna be all of the values of k that are divisible by m. In other words, multiples of m. So via a quick re-indexing, I can write that as a sub m k. And then I have the sum j equals zero to m minus one of eta to the j, but then remember we've re-indexed k to mk, so we have this is j times m times k, and then we have x to the mk. Okay, fantastic. Now I won't re-index the other bit, and so the other bit will be all of the values of k that are not multiples of m. So I'll write that in the following way. So this is gonna be equal to the sum k equals zero to infinity, and let's just write down here that m does not divide k. We'll write it like that. So that'll be things that have like a remainder of one, two, all the way up to m minus one when divided by m. In other words, not divisible by m. And then we have a sub k, and then inside that we still have this sum j equals zero to m minus one of eta to the j k x to the k. Okay, fantastic. Now those look a little different because recall that we re-indexed this one as we went because that was a sum over things that were multiples of k. Now we can quickly notice that rewriting this via exponent rules, we can write this as eta to the m to the jk, but then eta to the m is equal to one. And so we have one to the jk, which is equal to one. Okay, and another thing to notice is that because here m does not divide k, that makes eta to the k equal to eta to the one, eta to the two, all the way up to eta to the m minus one. It is one of those powers of eta. Okay, so now we can simplify this a little bit more. So this is gonna be one over m, and now we have the sum k equals zero to infinity of a sub m k, x to the m k, and then inside of that we have the sum j equals zero to m minus one of just the number one. That's all that's left. In that step, I brought this x to the m k out. And now I'll write this other thing like the sum k equals zero to infinity of um, a k x to the k, and now inside that I have one plus eta to the k plus eta to the 2k plus all the way up to eta to the m minus 1k. That's what I get from this sum right here. And then let's go ahead and close this up. Great. And now the important thing to notice here is because eta to the jk is one of these values of eta to the 1, eta to the 2, eta to the m minus 1. That means it is a root of this polynomial. But notice that this expression right here is exactly this polynomial after having been, been uh, evaluated at eta to the k. And so that makes this whole thing trend towards zero. Now going back to this part, notice we've got our goal sum over here, and now we're summing j equals zero to m minus one of just the number one. In other words, we're adding one to itself m times, that'll cancel this one over m on the outside and leave us with exactly what we want. In other words, this sum right here is gonna cancel this m right here, and we're left with the sum k equals zero to infinity of a sub m k x to the m k, which is exactly what we wanted to establish as our tool. Okay, so now let's go to our first goal, which is the sum as k goes from zero to infinity of n choose 4k. So we first want to find a generating function for this binomial coefficient where there's no four there, but that's not too hard to find. Notice we can just use one plus x to the n is equal to the sum k equals zero to infinity of n choose k x to the k. So that's well-known binomial expansion.
And here we'll take n to be a natural number, which really makes this a finite sum. But as k gets bigger than n, we obviously get zero out of that binomial coefficient. So we might as well extend it to infinity so we don't have to worry about doing any floors where the sum ends. Okay, great. Now, since we've got a four here, our m will be equal to four. In other words, our eta will be equal to e to the two pi i over four, which is e to the pi i over two, which you can check via e Euler's formula that that's exactly equal to i. So now we can write the generating function down for this. We have the sum k equals zero to infinity of n, choose 4k times x to the 4k will be equal to one over four. And then we'll have our starting generating function being evaluated at x. So we'll have one plus x to the n. And then our starting generating function evaluated at i times x. So that'll be one plus i x over n. And then at i squared, times x, so that's negative one, so that'll be one minus x over n. And then finally at i cubed x, but that's negative i, so we've got one minus i times x to the n power. Great. And so that's following from this tool that we just built. So now what we'll do is we'll evaluate this at x equals one, and that'll give us the sum k equals zero to infinity of n choose 4k equals one over four. And then this is gonna give us two to the n. And then this is going to give us one plus i to the n. And then this is gonna give us zero to the n, so that's just zero. And then one minus i to the n. And now we're gonna geometrically think about these complex numbers in their polar form. In other words, we're gonna think about the complex plane here. And then notice that one plus i is up here and one minus i is down there. And both of them are a distance of the square root of two away from the origin. So that's not too hard to see. And then the one above the real axis has an angle of pi over four from the positive x axis. And the one below the real axis has an angle of negative pi over four from the real axis. And that allows us to rewrite this expression. So now we have one fourth and then two to the n plus the square root of two to the n. And now this is e to the i times pi times n over four. So that's really e to the i pi over four to the n power, but I've used exponent rules here. And then plus e to the negative i pi times n over four. And then that also has a root two to the n attached to it, but I'll just factor it out. So we get something like that. But now we can expand each of these using Euler's formula. So then we're gonna have one fourth, two to the n plus root two to the n. And then we're gonna have cosine pi n over four plus i sine pi n over four and then plus cosine negative pi n over four, but cosine is an even function, so that gives us pi n over four. And then since sine is an odd function, we can bring that minus out and we get minus i sine pi n over four. And now we're missing a parenthesis, so we have that. But now we can notice that these two imaginary parts cancel, which is, something that should happen because notice we're clearly adding up real numbers. And let's see what we end up with. We're gonna end up with one fourth and then two to the n plus, so I've got a cosine pi times n over four and another one of them, so those add up. I'll put the two out front and then I have root two to the n and then finally cosine pi n over four and that's it. So that's what we get for our first goal. So I'll clean up the board and then we'll calculate the second sum. We just got done proving our first goal, which was the sum as k goes from zero to infinity of n choose 4k was equal to one quarter times the quantity two to the n plus two times the square root of two to the n cosine n pi over four. And now we're gonna employ a similar strategy for this second sum. And so that strategy will again be using this combinatorial tool involving generating functions. So we wanna find the sum as k goes from zero to infinity of one over the quantity 
3k factorial. So our first goal will be to find a similar expression that does not involve three, but does involve an x. And it's not a big leap to notice that what we want here is the sum as k goes from zero to infinity of one over k factorial x to the k. So notice if we set x equal to one and then replace k with three k, that's exactly what we have here. But this is a well-known Taylor expansion of e to the x. So that's good. And now we can use our tool and that will say that as we take k from zero to infinity of one over three k factorial x to the three k, that's gonna be equal to one third e to the x plus e to the eta x plus e to the eta squared x. So notice we're summing over the powers of this primitive third root of unity. So eta will be e to the two pi i over three. So let's go ahead and write that here. Eta equals e to the two pi i over three. And now using Euler's formula, we can rewrite that as the cosine of two pi over three, which is equal to negative half plus i times the sine of two pi over three, which is root three over two. So that's gonna be plus i times root three over two. Okay, fantastic. And then similarly, we can find eta squared, which is e to the four pi i over three, and that will be negative half minus i times the square root of three over two. So now we're gonna plug both of those values for eta and eta squared into these functions right here. So now we have one third, and then we have e to the x plus e to the minus half x, and then e i root three over two times x. So I've split up the real and imaginary part. And then we'll have plus e to the, again, minus half x, e to the minus i root three over two times x. And now I'm in a pretty good spot. I'm gonna go ahead and set x equal to one, and that will give me my goal sum. So on the left-hand side, if I set x equal to one, I get the sum k equals zero to infinity of one over the quantity 3k factorial, but then on the right hand side I get one third, and then I have e to the one plus e to the minus half, that's what I get from this term, and I'll go ahead and factor this e to the minus half out, because notice that is in both of these. So I factored this e to the minus half out, and then that'll leave me with e to the i root three over two plus e to the minus i root three over two. But then we can use Euler's formula to simplify those and you get the exact same simplification that you had before. In other words, the imaginary parts cancel and you're left with the real parts which involve a cosine. So we'll have one third e plus e to the minus half and then this is gonna simplify to two times cosine of root three over two. So now maybe we can simplify that a little bit. So notice here we have e plus two times the square root of e times the cosine of root three over two, and then this is all over three. Okay, so we have established a closed formula for our second goal. And now before we stop, maybe try to use this tool to find some other nice infinite sum identities and post your results in the comments. Okay, now we're good.